Your heel pain may not be coming from plantar fasciitis. Getting rid of heel pain can be as simple as stretching, massaging, and strengthening. The key is to know what to stretch, where to massage, and how to strengthen. Today, we're gonna to be going over all three of these interventions. Some of you may be able to see a decrease in your symptoms just using one intervention. However, a combination of all three is best for long-term success. To properly apply these interventions, we need to make sure we are addressing the correct issue. There are three different locations of pain that most will refer to as plantar fasciitis, but stem from different issues that may not even involve the plantar fascia. Pain in the furthest back part of the heel is often a result of fat pad atrophy. This is commonly thought to be plantar fasciitis because of its location and similar symptoms. The cause of pain is different, however. The heel has a fat pad which acts as a cushion when we stand up and bear weight. This person will typically have a flat and painful heel, be over the age of 40, and usually wear shoes like flip-flops or sandals that have little heel support. It will be particularly painful while walking when the back of the heel hits the ground. To test for this, push down on the point of pain with your finger. Without letting go, squeeze the thick skin of the heel. The pain should decrease with the added compression and cushion. Adding support to the heel will be most beneficial in this case to remove pain. It is best to consult with your local physical therapist or podiatrist to discuss proper shoe wear, orthotics, or taping techniques that can decrease your pain and provide support. Applying the exercises and interventions presented in this video will also help mitigate symptoms. True plantar fasciitis pain is found in the middle of the plantar fascia. This person will state that their pain feels like something is tearing and will be worse with activity right after resting or sitting for a while. Extending the toes will likely cause an increase in symptoms. If this is the case, together with your physical therapist, modify activities to allow the pain to calm down. The therapist can help you gradually regain pain-free mobility through an appropriate progression of massage techniques and stretching. Orthotics or shoes that provide support and motion control can be beneficial along with proper use of night splints. The key to success with this injury is to modify activities while limiting pain. Try to keep your pain levels at a three out of 10 level of pain or below. For example, if you are a runner, scale back the distance, pace, or frequency of your runs for a temporary time until pain is under control. Performing the interventions provided can help with this as well. Lastly, we have heel pain. This pain is at the front part of the heel. The pain will come on gradually and will be painful when first standing up. Recent research indicates that this heel pain could be a result of tendinopathy of the small muscles of the foot, especially the flexor digitorum brevis, which originates at the heel instead of the plantar fascia itself. If the foot or ankle is too stiff or too unstable, the foot will compensate in other ways, which leads to stress of these tendons over time, similar to what people experience with tennis elbow. A physical therapist can help guide you in eliminating this pain. Treatment will typically include a combination of stretching, manual techniques to decrease pain and improve mobility, and strengthening of the foot muscles to prevent recurrence of the issue. Stretches will be important for eliminating heel pain. The first is to stretch the calf muscles. Stretching these muscles can help relieve tension at the bottom of the foot. It can also lead to better mobility at the ankle, which can help with foot mechanics during activity. Begin this stretch in a staggered stance, standing with the painful foot in the back. Point the toes toward the opposite arch. This is an important step because if the toes are pointed out, the foot will just flatten and we will mitigate the effects of the stretch. This alignment puts us in position to stretch by leaning forward and shifting our weight to the front foot. Keep the back knee straight and your heel on the ground. You should feel a stretch in the back of the leg. Hold this position for 15 seconds and repeat four times. The second stretch is to use a strap, belt, or towel to pull the foot. Place the strap along the ball of the foot, bringing your toes toward your face with your foot at a slight angle inward. In the initial stages of heel pain, you should try this at any time you have sat or rested for longer than 15 minutes before you stand. Repeat this four times for 15 seconds. As a bonus, you can stretch your flexor digitorum brevis muscle in a seated position by bringing the foot on top of the opposite knee and flexing your toes upward. Place the base of the palm along the tips of your toes and pull back. Hold this stretch three times for 20 seconds. Soft tissue work will be key in decreasing heel pain. A physical therapist could use a metal scraping tool on the bottom of the foot or calf, which would be ideal. However, I wouldn't recommend you do that to yourself at home. To progress this treatment at home, you could use a foam roller, Theragun, 
or your fingers on the calf. This should be a deep massage. Perform this for up to five minutes. Working the fingers along the bottom of the foot, tracing the three muscles that attach at the heel, is another way to provide tension and pain relief. To strengthen the foot and ankle, many people have tried doing the ABCs or using a TheraBand in various directions. Maybe you've done towel scrunches or marble pickups. Strengthening for the foot muscles often has the wrong focus. These interventions have their place and can help, but there are other exercises that will give you more bang for your buck. Over 95% of the time that we are using the foot muscles, we are in standing. The muscles are trying to absorb the load of body weight, acting like shocks on a bike. When we walk, run, or jump, these muscles are controlling the descent of our body to the ground. To train them in a functional way, we need to be standing and doing eccentric exercises. Stand near a wall with the affected foot in front of you and your knee unlocked. Have the back foot behind you, just on your toe, using it as a kickstand. You aren't putting weight through that foot. We are going to put our hands behind our back and lean forward slowly, bringing the nose toward the wall. Make sure your heel stays on the ground and keep your hips and torso aligned as you lean forward. You should feel your foot suction cup the ground as the foot stabilizes the body. This is working the muscles of the foot in a similar way to a walking pattern. Hold the lean for 8 to 10 seconds and come back out slowly. Repeat for 3 sets of 10 repetitions. If this is too hard or painful, try standing in a staggered stance to begin with until you gain the strength and stability needed to progress. As you get more comfortable with this exercise, you can progress to having your hands behind your head or taking out the kickstand foot. Progression can include various forms of weight shifts as you lean forward that will force the foot to grip the ground and control movement, such as leaning side to side, a light upper body twist, or adding weight. An exercise to strengthen and control the muscles of the ankle is a heel raise with the toes extended. Place your toes on a towel to stretch the foot then do a heel raise. This will stretch the big toe and muscles of the foot as well as activate the calf muscles. Aim for three sets of 15 repetitions if doing this on a single leg. Use a wall for balance as needed. If this is too difficult, begin with double leg calf raises for three sets of 25. To progress the exercise, you can stand on a step or other elevated surface to increase the range of motion and difficulty, aiming for three to four sets of eight to 15 repetitions. Apply these interventions with consistency and you should see significant changes in your pain. Keep track of your pain as you start this program. If your pain is rated as a three out of 10 when you first get out of bed originally and the exercises don't flare things up above four out of 10, you are good to go. However, if the next day your pain getting out of bed is a five or six out of 10, you may have pushed yourself too hard and you should try an easier variation of the exercises or decrease the level of daily activity as possible. Give these exercises a try and let me know in the comments below how they went for you. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Hope to see you again soon.